So a pressure switch in a furnace, what does it do? What it does is it acts as a proving switch for the draft inducer. So the draft inducer starts and it has a tube that goes either to the draft inducer housing or the heat exchanger compartment. And uh, it is set for a, a specific uh, static pressure, whether it be one inch, uh, 0.5 inches, 0.7 inches, whatever they are, they come in a wide variety of ranges. And sometimes furnaces have three, four, six pressure switches on them. So when the draft inducer starts, the pressure switch closes, it lets the rest of the furnace know I'm safe to start. Now, pressure switches do go bad. I'm not gonna say they do, but most of the time, if you have a pressure switch fault, it's because of something else. Whether there be the draft inducer failed, there's water in the flue, there's a clogged piece of tubing, there's a clogged condensate drain, um, a bunch of different stuff. But sometimes there is a bad pressure switch. And in these Nordine two-stage gas furnaces, well, they're, they're air temp made by Nordine, uh, two-stage gas furnaces, we have had a rash of bad 1.0 pressure switches. And the maintenance guy out of this complex thinks <laughs> every time he has a pressure switch fault, he has a bad pressure switch. So he asked us to order them. And we, we have had a rash of bad ones, so we do order it and go out there with it, but we only do that to make sure we have it if it is a bad pressure switch. On these two furnaces I worked on today, one of them was a bad pressure switch and one wasn't. So take a look. All right, guys, we are working on a two-stage air temp furnace here, and that pressure switch, the one with the orange dot on it, that was actually bad. I already changed it out, and I'm showing you right here a little T-rig that I made so the furnace would run, and I could also see how many inches of water column the draft inducer was pulling. So it's running right now, new pressure switch. The pressure switch was bad. It was not making when it hit 1.00 inches of water column. So we changed it out and I'm firing it up now, just making sure I check over everything. Something, something interesting here, uh, the furnace is about to fire. When it does, I go from 0.14 up to like 0 0.6, 0 0.7. And I thought I just thought that was interesting that the um, inches of water column raises, see it there, right there, raises when the furnace fires. I just thought that was kind of cool, kind of interesting. But yeah, these furnaces here, this two-stage air temp um, takes, four pressure switches total. Two for first stage, two for second stage. The two first stage ones are a 0.7 and a 0.43. And the first stage, or I'm, I'm sorry, the second stage is a 1.0 and then also a 0.73, I believe. So uh, typically the pressure switches don't go bad, but on these furnaces, for some reason they do go bad. See, we just dropped down into first stage here um, that's why the everything quieted down and we went um, we dropped about three or four inches of water column there but yeah there's the pressure switches right there that 1.0 and then the uh i believe it's the 0.7 that's behind it there um, and something also weird about these pressure switches is if you jump one out it actually won't go into an error when it goes to start back up again as long as one switch <laughs> opens or closes it's, it's fine. I don't know. It's a weird furnace. It's a weird furnace setup. So there's my other two uh, pressure switches up there also. Uh, the purple wired ones, one on top, one on bottom, are for uh, second stage. The orange wired ones are for first stage. All right, so this is another furnace here. This is an example of the pressure switch doing its job. So the maintenance guy thought he had another bad pressure switch here, but he didn't. It was just clogged. So I'm taking a little tiny drill bit here and where the um, the tubing for the pressure switch connects at to that little black plug right there, that was clogged. 
and I, I, like I said, I'm just taking kind of taking a drill bit. I, I'm kind of all over the place with the camera, but I'm taking a drill bit and clearing that out to make sure it's good and clear. And, um, and we're good. So you can see, I just got it in there. I'm just going to work it back and forth, make sure it's good there. I also, I don't show it on camera, but I do clear the condensate. I blow um, into it and then I make sure I blow through it to make sure there's no debris or anything in there. A very thorough way to do it would be to remove the draft inducer and remove that bat, that black piece of plastic there and just make sure you get everything cleared out of there. Don't need to do that in this, in this service call, but um, sometimes you do if it's really badly clogged. So I'm just going to hook up this orange piece of hose right here. And I'm just going to blow through it and make sure it's, um, it's good and cleared out. So uh, in a minute here, I'm going to fire it back up and make sure we're good to go. Uh, the gray tube right there actually goes to the pressure switch. So uh, I'm not a huge fan of this furnace just because of how cheaply made it is. Um, it's a very budget two-stage furnace, uh, but they do work. Uh, I do not uh, expect this furnace to last 20 years just because of how cheaply made uh, everything is on it. I've already done two or three heat exchangers in this complex uh, for these style furnaces. So... All right, there's everything put back together. Um, we're starting back up now, and we're going to make sure we're good to go here. So we'll just watch this thing operate for a couple minutes and make sure we're good. Throwing any airs. Our igniter is now coming on. So yeah, guys, uh, one bad pressure switch, one was just a clogged piece of tubing. And um, I really couldn't get it on camera, but it was like a, like a powdery white stuff in there. So I was able to take a small drill bit and run it in there and get it cleaned up. So um, always uh, change the pressure switch as a last option because most of the time that pressure switch is just doing its job. It is telling the rest of the system that Look, I did not close, and I think there's an issue. So, all right, guys, that's going to be it for this one. So don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you're new here. I'll catch you on the next one.